Hey guys, in this section of the video bootcamp series, we're going to cover melee combat and how it works in this system. Now, there are a lot of conditions that can apply when it comes to melee combat. I'm not going to cover all of them because they are uh, quite many, but make sure you take and look them over in section 8.0 of the rulebook. Now, to be eligible for melee combat, a unit has to be in good order, i.e. they can't be shaken. Now, there are a bunch of non-melee eligible units. These are units who cannot participate in melee combat, period. I've got them listed on the screen for you now. So if these units were engaged in melee combat by an enemy unit, those units would automatically be eliminated at that point. They have to have a friendly melee eligible unit with them, or in a case of like a leader, a support or weapon that makes them melee eligible to take and actually be engaged in melee combat without being automatically eliminated. Now we're going to go over a quick example of melee combat, how it works. I've got the melee table thrown across the screen for you now and we're, I'm going to show you how to figure out your odds, okay? It's actually quite simple. We're going to have our German squad here engage into melee combat with this US Airborne squad. They're gonna be marked with a melee marker. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna figure out the odds difference between the attacker and the defender in their inherent firepowers, okay? You're gonna to total all of the units and then compare. Our German has a two, our American has a two, and this gives us a difference of one to one, okay? If you look on your melee table, that means that the attackers, the Germans, are going to need to roll an 8 or higher on a 2d6 roll to eliminate the defenders. Once they have completed their attack, the defenders, like the attackers, will choose who they're going to attack back, figure out their odds. In this case, the odds would be the same, 1 to 1, and they would also be rolling an 8 or higher to take and eliminate them. This combat is performed simultaneously, so you're not going to remove killed off units until after all the combat is completed. Now, there are a couple of specific examples I want to cover when it comes to some of the conditions that apply. For example, let's take and add a German hero to this melee combat. In this situation, the firepower is a three compared to the American two. This would not be a three to two odds. This would actually be a two to one because remember, hero units provide a column shift, one in their favor in melee combat. Also, leaders, like we know, are non-melee eligible units on their own, but they can provide their leadership bonus to friendly units in their hex in melee combat, or if they have a support weapon that is melee eligible, they can use that support weapon at half its value, inherent firepower value, in melee combat, but not add their leadership value on top of it. In this case, if he used the support weapon, this leader would be adding a one to the combat, giving them a three to two odd, okay? Now, the combat is going to continue until all of one side is killed or one side withdraws from the combat. Now, when it comes to withdrawing from the combat, you actually have to perform a morale check to successfully leave melee combat. You can leave melee combat by any type of movement with the exception of assault fire or stealth assault fire because you're not going to be able to fire from a hex you're already in melee combat in and then move. So you can do an assault move or a normal move out of here, but not an assault fire move, okay? Now, units who leave, so let's say our German leader and squad here, they're all engaged in this melee combat. If they both successfully uh, passed a morale check and left the hex, they could be outfired on by the remaining defending units in that hex. So sometimes you do want to leave behind a single unit to tie up all the units in melee combat so they do not have the ability to opfire on you. Now, something else that can be done for melee combat is to reinforce it. As an example here, we throw down an extra German squad. That squad on its impulse could take and move into this melee combat, <clears throat> reinforcing 
what's already happening. And if it had not been conducted that turn, the melee combat would go ahead and be initiated at that point. Now, if a unit is ambush capable, which we're going to cover in a later video, they still would be able to triple their inherent firepower when they reinforce the combat, but it would remain simultaneous instead of the uh, first strike ability that they normally get when it comes to ambushes.